Hello, it's Jim from JetsonHacks.com. Today we have a four digit seven segment LED that runs off of I2C. This is from Adafruit. Let's open it up and see what we have. The other day it was Back to the Future Day. And of course the DeLorean had many of these seven segment LEDs to drive the time circuits. It's kind of interesting. Let's see. Here's a seven segment backpack. And a little header pin. So the header pin goes in here. The instructions warn, do not put the display on upside down or it won't work. I think that's good advice for life. Don't do things upside down. Oh, very circuity looking. Okay, so we want to match it with the silk screen. It looks pretty easy. Just to be sure. And now we're ready to solder it up. Solder all 14 pins. We get our solder. Get this out of the way. So that looks all soldery. The instructions say next to clip the long pins. So I'm not sure that you really need to do that, but I will do that anyway. Make sure you wear your safety goggles. These things just fly. Okay, we're all clipped. Oops, needs a little more. Okay, now we're ready to put on a header. So I need four pins. Header has six. Okay, put that in there to hold it. We're ready to solder it up.
and we should be good to go. Okay, so let's wire it up. This display will run off 5 volts or 3.3 volts. For this one, we'll just run it off 5 volts, so it'll be nice and bright for the cameras. So, J3A1, pin 1 goes to the power. J3A114 goes to ground. The clock, which is on J3A1, goes to the clock. So it's a little bit mixed up here. Clock is on the outside on this display. And then the remaining one, which is J3A1, pin 20, goes to the data line. It's SDA. So we should be able to fire it up. Ah, no fire. Excellent. Right then, let's install some software. This is right after a flash from Jetpack for L4T 21.4. Let's install Git. Then let's install the development package for I2C and the tools. And let's take a look to see if we see our friend. Hmm. Nope. And it doesn't appear to work. Let's take a look. The wiring must be buggered. Ah, okay, so it looks like the clock is over one too many pins. So you should never do this at home. You should always turn it off and rewire it. So I moved it back over to the correct spot. Let's see what happens. Ah, there it is. Okay, let us continue. I've written a little library for the LED backpack. Let's read that in. Switch over to that directory. Over to the examples. Let's compile the example. Just make. And let's run the example. sudo dot slash display example.
So we get a flashing. Next, we print out a hex number, B-E-E-F. A float number, notice the decimal point. Then we have a little countdown here. Then we have a little clock display. Notice the colon. These are all individually controllable. So that one appears to work. And turn it off. Just as a comparison, let's wire up the Gen 1 I2C. This requires a level converter as you go from 1.8 volt signals to 3.3 volt signals on the display. So this kind of is a level converter breakout board. And what it allows you to do is put 1.8 volts in here and raises the signals up to 3.3 volts on the other side. So basically this is five volts off of J3A1 pin one, which drives the display. This is a ground, it's J3A114. We take the, the ground and we run it on these two rails. So you get the ground for the level converter on the high side, the ground for the LED backpack, and the ground for the level converter on the low side. Then we take 3.3 volts, that's coming out of J3816, and we run it onto this rail. And we take that and power the high side of the level converter. We take J3A1 19, and we run it to the 1.8 volt rail. We also take the 1.8 volt and run it over here to the low side of the level converter. We also took this 3.3 volts and ran it to the high side of the level converter. Next up, we take the clock, which is J3A1 pin 21, and we put that in as A1 on the low side. We take the data, which is J3A1 pin 23, and we put it into A2. When it goes to the level converter, we take the 3.3 volt signal. So we take the clock here from B1, and we run it over the clock of the display, and the same thing with the data, where we take B2 and run it to the data of the LCD backpack. We need to change our software around a little bit, so let's switch cameras. So we're going to change the bus number in our example to match the Gen 1 I2C bus. So we're going to open up the file display example.cpp. And in our initialization sequence, right after we initialize the display matrix, we're going to change the bus to zero, which is the Gen 1 I2C bus. I'm going to save that. Switch over to the example directory. Make the example. And we're going to execute it. And you can see as before, we have the same demonstration running. 
There are four I2C buses that are available through the headers. You've seen Gen 1 and Gen 2 I2C. There's also another couple of others. I'll leave a link. I'll leave a description in the blog article that goes along with this video.